There's no other facility like this in the world. What do you mean no other facility like this in the world? There's got to be. People no. pour silver all the time. Not right? like this. Not this type of silver. The shares have been hit, but not as much as everyone else no. as a result. What are you planning for this year that you think you can control? Yeah. You can't control the market, but you right. can control some of the deliverables. Here's my vision for my company, Canada right. Cobalt Works, and why should anyone new to this story think about it, getting on board and investing in you? Hello and welcome to our viewers on Crux Invest. We're here today with Frank Bassa. He's the CEO of Canada Cobalt Works. We're going to talk to uh, Frank about the state of market, cobalt market, uh, Castle Mine, recent and a recent LOI that he's signed. Get into some of the strategy and the team who's going to deliver it. So, hello, Frank. How are you? I'm well. And how are you, sir? Oh, very good. It's good to see you in London. It's not very good weather, but good to have better you. than back home. Really? Yeah. So like that. Where, where's home? Uh, Northern, Northern Ontario. Northern Ontario, yeah. okay. Well, well, I'll, I'll, why don't we kick off? Give us a one minute summary for people who have not heard this story okay. before. So basically what we have here is actually a former producer in the cobalt camp. The cobalt camp itself is actually called cobalt, but the only thing they ever produced out of there was high grade silver. And uh, we acquired one of the higher grade assets that Agnico had when I was working with them 30 years ago. And uh, we immediately moved forward to start to, what I'll call, put it into production. Uh, putting things in production in, in any country right now is a long drawn out thing. So we're permitted, we're underground, we're drilling. Uh, we've already taken samples out from underground. We actually produce uh, on spec uh, for somito cobalt sulfate, which is for the battery market. And uh, as of two weeks away, we produce our first silver bar. So the intent going forward is to keep going in that direction. The intent is to go into production. More than likely, we'll be producing uh, from the tailings. The tailings are quite high grade, they're between four to 10 ounces a ton. And we've already produced a concentrate. We've also sold the stuff to the Asians, so we do uh, have something in place to go in production near term, long term, hard rock underground. But it'll be a silver uh, product with a cobalt credit, cobalt nickel credit. Got it. There's a lot of moving parts there. A lot of moving parts. Should we get into it? Because I'm, well, I'm, I'm it, interested it, in the, how, how you're piecing all this together. Yeah, actually, you might say there's a lot of moving parts, but not really. You know, like it, it, it's one flows into the other. So it's kind of a, a lot of the stuff that we're discussing right now, we mentioned actually started three years ago. Uh, we kind of preset the stage. So, you know, the tailings, we know we're going to do it because when I was with Agnico 30 years ago, that's how we made money. And if you look at Agnico Eagle Mines now, it's like a $10 billion plus company but they started in the cobalt camp. So the tailings are easy to do. We brought in the equipment from South Africa over two years ago. So, you know, it's uh, low tech technology. Uh, we produce the product. We have an agreement with the Asians. So that's in play. It's a simple thing. Seasonal, you know, uh, we might have four or five years of that. It's cash flow. Uh, the other thing we did, we picked up a facility. We signed an LOI uh, to pick up a facility. And when you look at the logistics, uh, it's kind of, it has a combination of analytical lab, processing right. facility. Let me start because I, I don't want you to kind of run through the entire okay. uh, portfolio for me in one go because I think people, I just want people to understand it. Okay, so yep. let's start with the thinking first of all. Like I say, I, I, it does feel to me like there's a lot of moving yep. parts. You're, yep. And I think what you're saying is that a necessity given the market, cobalt, yep. etc. So this originally was a silver company. It, yep, it right? actually, it, it always was a silver company. Right. Yeah. The, Name the change? Name change was because there was a demand for cobalt. Right. So that gives us a clue, just to hang, a little bit of a clear habit about how yeah. you think in terms of looking at what the market's thinking. And what yep. you, well, the market wants, we give it to them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So name change to cobalt. Yeah. There, this is, but this is still silver with a yeah. cobalt credit. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, like, a clue into the way, that you, the way you go about running a business. So yeah. let's talk about some of those moving parts if we may. So can yeah. we start with Castle Mine? Okay. Okay. So you've, t tell us a bit about that project first of all. And Castle Mine was actually a former producer, which Agnico Eagle acquired. Uh, you know, they weren't the first people to discover it. When they were operating it, when I was working for them in the silver division, they were actually mining at 80 ounces a ton of silver. It's a very high grade mine. And you know, you can see the results from our drill program, first drill program underground, you know, typical grades we're getting were about 100 ounces a ton mm -hmm. in the good. drill core, which is, you know, very nice. And of course, in those days, and even, uh, you know, for majority of the cobalt camp uh, existence, they threw the cobalt away. 
so we did recover the cobalt. We have a process to recover. It's called Re2Ox. We use SGS, a global uh, engineering consulting group. They produce cobalt sulfate on spec, but we always reported the silver assays, always. Because the real value to this asset is actually the silver, and we produce the cobalt for free. And that's the right. way this thing's being designed. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, we just put, like I said, we put a, a silver bar to show the world we can do. So basically, we, we show the world we have what we call proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So we can produce a cobalt sulfate, we can produce a silver bar. Fantastic. And, and that's. This is part of this recent LOI that you have with Polymet. Yeah. That's right, okay. Yep. So that deal was 650,000 yep. bucks, 50, yep. 50 cash, 50 shares. Yep. So it wasn't a particularly large transaction, but you're buying some intellectual property and you're now 100% owners, is that right? No, we'll be 100% owners now. When you look at the thing and people say, gee whiz, that's a real cheat. Not yep. really, now. To just put things in perspective for you, if you want to build a lab now in Canada, a NASA mm -hmm. lab in Canada, it's about 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And then if you do the engineering studies, environmental studies, it's another 400,000. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include a building or the land. Eh? So you, you just an NASA lab, it can be 1.6 million. We're buying the whole facility plus a processing facility, plus a building, plus the land. Half its paper, yeah. it's still 650. That's a great deal. Yeah. But I'm just trying to understand why so cheap. Why did they want to get out? Why sell it? Unless you have a source of feed for the facility, right. it becomes expensive. Eh? Why not a JV? Why? Why? I can own it for next to nothing. No, not you. Why, why would they not look for a JV partner who can provide the feed stock? He wants to sell out. He right. made a lot of money. You know, the gentleman is, uh, what do I call, a very dynamic fellow. And a lot of the properties, we call him the king of cobalt because he knew every property and it's Parents have been there since day one. Mm -hmm. You know, they came from Europe and they've been there since when day one. He did all the transactions, all the cobalt companies from Australia, all over the world in a cobalt camp. I'm sure he made a few dollars. He wants to retire. Right, okay, He's of, of, of a certain age. Um, mm -hmm. So what's, what's in it for you? You bought some intellectual property, which is mm -hmm. gonna allow, and you've done a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. You poured like, th what, three bars? Or no, well, we poured? we poured 300 ounces. It's a small pour, but the point sure. was proof of concept. Right. The intent is, uh, we like to pour 1,000 ounce bar, so probably within a short period of time, we're pouring a 1,000 ounce bar. And it's kind of the norm, a 1,000 ounce bar. You know? right, so we okay. wanna show you we can do the 1,000 ounce bar. Uh, you know, the facility can do about uh, 10,000 uh, ounces a day, pour. Right. Okay. And when I joined Agnico in the early days, that's where we process everything through there. All the hydrate came through there. And Agnico used to do 1.6 million ounces through that facility. Right, okay. Ounces of silver. So what's the opportunity here with this particular component, the, the, the lab element of yeah. it? Well, actually, of it kind of closes the loop for us. In other words, we can produce an end product. Before, we didn't have the capability. We couldn't pour a bar. Right? Sure. So you find all the silver, and where are you going to pour it? You're beholden to yeah. I mean, outsourcing. To, yeah, to, to build all the facility like that. Like, there's no other facility like this in the world. To build a facility like this with permitting and all that, two, three years. What do you mean no other facility like this in the world? There's got to be. People no, pour silver all the time. Not right? like this. Not this type of silver. This is the silver in the cobalt camp is massive native silver. There's a certain way to recover it. The facility has this ability to crush the rock, screen up the high-grade silver, mm -hmm. and pour a bar. Right. Are you going to be able to operate at the scale that you think you're going oh, to yeah. need to? Well, like I said, Agnico, when I joined them, this is like 30 years ago, they used to pour 1.6 million ounces through that type of facility. That type of facility, but not well, they this use facility. It, no? They use that. Use this facility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you think there's some real inherent value there? Oh, yeah. You can get the feedstock coming. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it unless there's a... How much more are you going to need to spend on it? Depending what, what we're permitted to do, like it's a huge facility, has mm -hmm. a lot of square footage. The intent is also if we can integrate the re to ox process in there. Mm -hmm. And the ideal thing is if we can produce an end product for the Asian market or the European market, a cobalt sulfate on spec, we'll see if we can do it. Eh? Okay, so and it's yeah. a bit of a reach, but you know, right now we know we can produce a bar. You know. Right. So the answer is you don't know how much you're going to need to spend on it. Going no, forward. no, it's too early stage. We're still, we have a 90 day. Uh, Due diligence, you know, on the LOI, and I mean, we only signed this thing I think two weeks ago, something like that. So. Oh right, mm -hmm. but it uses the phrase binding. What are you bound to? Well, he can't leave. He can't leave during that ninety-day. Oh, well, we tied him to the door, eh? Right. Okay. No, no, we didn't. But uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah, we're right. physical, you know. But okay. no, no. 
it's a to, to undertake some of these things, you know, right now, it's not a simple thing like you just buy it. You have to go through a very complex process, and one of the things is, is the permitting process. And usually the permits are transferable, but because there's such a crucial shortage of people in, in the government, mm. you know, in the old days, you just show up in the morning, you do the deal, and by the afternoon, you get your amended permit. Mm. Because there's, the people aren't there, you have to wait till you find the individual. So you send it in, and usually the ministry takes 30 days to answer you. Right. And then after they answer you, they might have some conditions, which then is sent in again, and then it's another three days. Right. So we chose 90 days. The reality is we'd like to close the deal yesterday. But, you know, we'll still go ahead. You know, the, the thing is, the, the ability to acquire an asset for a junior like us to create what we call end-to-end -end mm. is just that's good. So as long as it's somewhere around the price that's been indicated and there's oh, no, cheap. nothing well, wrong we, with the intellectual property yeah, process, yeah. you're likely to go ahead with that deal. Oh, we'll go ahead. Like, I mean, we bought this castle mine for $25,000, eh? all kinds of difficulties with it. But you know what? We paid off the difficulties. The difficulties were minimal mm. for the value of the asset. Eh? Okay, okay. So yeah. at, some, at some point, you're going to need to raise some money to move yep. this. Yep. Yep. Lab component through yep. to its full yep. flexed size, yeah, yeah. giving yeah. the scale you need. Yeah. Um, I guess then you're going to be speaking to other silver producers yep. in the region yep. and saying yep. we can toll for you. Well, we did that before. When, when I was like Nico, we used to toll everybody else's rock. Right. We poured a bar for them. and So that's quite a powerful position oh, yeah. to be in. Yeah. Well, it, if it's, you can get it, the scale. It, it's, it's, a, it's a control position. Eh? Yeah. yeah. You know, it has rail service. Like, it, it's kind of neat. Eh? It's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful acquisition, you know. Right, and then I think you, you talked about um, also global energy metals in there. Some yeah, so what we did was we reached out with our know-how. It's a, a process called Retoac. We reached out to them. The reason we chose them, they're in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And in Nevada, Tesla is there. So Tesla is actually basically next door to these people. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Tesla kind of indicated we'll try to build a battery, no cobalt. That's, you can do that. Yeah, It's a possibility. But when we met with Nissan in Japan two years ago, they said, yeah. We agree with you. We'd like to have a battery, no cobalt. Here's the problem, mm. no range. So you take the cobalt out, you have no range. Yeah. The next thing they told me, said, listen, you know, like to commercialize a new battery design, it's 20 years. Mm. So what they're doing is instead of taking a brand new battery waiting 20 years, they're taking the current lithium ion battery, lowering the cobalt level, increasing the nickel level, manganese level. The only problem with that is Safety. the battery is yeah. Uh, less stable. Less stable. Right. Okay. So coming, so coming back to global energy metals, why was the conversation you having with them? Well, we went to the property and actually we found a lot of stuff there mm. and we found a lot of gold there, which right. surprised us. And the grades were kind of astronomical. We were there with an XRF. An XRF is good on base metals. So we found a lot of cobalt, we found a lot of nickel. Plus we found a whole bunch of rare earths. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being a little more than we thought it was. Uh, so we, we, we grabbed some samples, we sent them to SGS, results came back better than we expected. So we want to undertake a much larger program there. The thing is, see, they're basically calling themselves a, a cobalt stock. And it's unfortunate, they're part of the rest of the cobalt industry. They got hit pretty hard. Sure. Uh, we got hit, but not hard, because our story is also silver. And the reality, the silver is going to pay our bills. Well, I think we'll come back to that, because yeah. I think that's the how you've adapted yeah. on various occasions to yeah. survive, where yeah. others have just ridden the, yeah. the ride down. Okay. Yeah. So, but, so, so what, what, is the, what is the deal with global energy metals? The what global energy is to do with them? Yeah, so global energy, what we want to do is basically do what we did for uh, Canada Cobalt Works. Basically, what we did was we called a technical. We showed the world I can take low grade material or material that has high arsenic mm. and produce a cobalt sulfate on spec. Mm. So, you know, that's what we did here. Basically, we took a, a company, we did great grill, drill results, mm. didn't do anything for our stock price, but the fact that we produce cobalt sulfate took us some 90 cents. Eh? Mm. I think we can do the same with global energy. Right. And well, what's their relationship with you? Oh, it's a technical relationship, so to speak. We help them with the financing. Uh, they also have access to our know-how, you know, right. for, for a time frame. Uh, but it's unfortunate. It's, you know, like all the cobalt stock got hit, they got hit, you know. Right, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I was trying to work out, because they've, they've really been hit quite badly. I'm yeah, trying to work well, they all been hit badly, the ability yeah. to do anything going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, has that affected the relationship with you? No, the thing is, it, the, the reality, what I was surprised with their asset, it's not just a cobalt asset, but they have a lot of gold and silver, eh? 
Right. They're quite, quite, actually quite a lot of gold, which surprised us. But, but again, with all of these things, whether it's rare earths, gold, silver, cobalt, they've mm -hmm. got to be, it's got to be commercial, right? It's yeah. all well and good yeah. having it Well, it's a there. foreign producer. Right. Actually, a group of English gentlemen were there and they actually set up a furnace mm. and produced product. The, their own, mined and produced their own. Yeah, they mined it, milled it, poured it. Right, okay. On site. So what went wrong? You guys left. The, the, the Brits The Brits left. went home, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> so they obviously weren't making money. So um, No, no, no. They shipped it all to England. They wouldn't process it there. They shipped everything to England. So, right, right. Yeah. It must have been a while ago. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. The, so there's not much money left in that organization. So in terms of that, what that could mean for you, it's small scale and you've got to work out how you commercialize, monetize Actually, that. The asset is quite... Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, example? well, the reason we went there was because actually working in Nevada is easier done than working in Canada sure. for permitting. Yep. You know, in Nevada, you just got on the net, two days later you get your permit. In Canada, it's not that easy. Mm. It's long, drawn out, complicated, complex. The Nevada system is elegant. Plus, the deposits they have there are something similar to what we have in the cobalt camp. They have addits, there's no water, mm -hmm. and permitting there is very, very easy. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is the market's not going in their direction. Uh, you know, we discussed things with them, and I said, look, we're changing the name of, of our company to reflect the silver mm -hmm. component. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our investors believe in silver blue better than gold, Yeah. and we're good with that, you know? Okay, so I'm just trying to, just trying to work out if you can still monetize or create value for your shareholders in, in, in yeah. Canada Cobalt Works. Um, with that particular component. I think we can. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So See, is yeah, that I, a question of timing or is that a question of the market coming, yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of the market coming back or getting some money in there? I mean, how are you going to do it? We're, we're dynamic, whatever they wish. The intent is like, we invested heavily. Like I personally put in $100,000 on the last private placement. Right. Uh, our company, you know, is a very large shareholder in, in Global Energy. Right. We wish them every success. Like yeah. if they win, we win. They eh? oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we win two is, ways. Eh? But that's not in, that's not in their control. It seems, and therefore, not well, it's the market. The, the market has actually hurt them really bad. And it's not just them. But you look at any cobalt. Uh, you know, you look at first cobalt. Oh yeah. Well, they, yeah, they got, nine times down on where they were, right, from two two years ago. And, and you know what? And they have good people behind them. Good money behind them. Yeah, I think you I know. I, I, and I think they have Glencore behind them. That's giving them millions. You know, I, yeah, I wrote it down. I think they're they're down from about one buck fifty ish down to about sixteen cents. Yeah, circa yeah. that today. So that's nine times less than they yeah. were yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, everyone's got hammered. Yeah, no, except I, I, us, we're down one third. I, and I saw that. Now, yeah. like, so, so that that comes back to what I mentioned at the beginning, which fascinates me about the way you think up here. You not accepted the market conditions. You said, we've got to do something to yeah. change this. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I think the polymet deal is kind of interesting. It certainly gave the market something to think about. You definitely yeah. saw a bump. Yeah, um, yeah reaction, it immediately had a bump. Reaction to that, so yeah. that, that's really good. Yeah. I think the, um, I think the, the, the deal with um, global energy metals kind of got people thinking about the sorts of things you can yeah. do. Whether or not that particular What's deal work? works, yeah. Yeah. When it works is, is irrelevant. The point yeah. is that you can go and have those sorts of conversations, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and now the you know refocus back on to well, you know you're always in silver, but getting away from the cobalt component, which is what it took to stay relevant yep. a couple yep. of years, well, yep. eighteen months ago, let's say, mm -hmm. right? So, w what is it about the? You've been doing this a long time, right? So, Since this morning. Wow. Yeah. Talent. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> no, I've been, I mean, you've been doing this a while, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you understand yeah. how the market works. Yeah. Right? you, you got to anticipate, if you can, what the market wants, and then set the stage. We call it set the stage, and sometimes it might be three months, six months, sometimes it might be a yeah. year, but you set the stage. And then we call it riding the wave. It's like you're on a surfboard, you don't get off, you know? Yeah. And you ride a wave. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so like I said, yeah. the, the, as we said, the shares have been hit, but not as much as everyone else no. as a result of this yeah. is good, right? Yeah. Um, what's, what are you planning for this year that you think you can control? Yeah. You can't control the market, but you yeah. can control some of the deliverables. What do you think those de meaningful deliverables well, are? You know, we just went and did some presentations in New York. I travel all the time, and, and the reality was nobody wanted to hear cobalt. I said, we're good with that. I accept it. Mm. Silver is actually, and mm. you know, like, 
Even yeah. people in New York think silver go about $100 an ounce. A lot of my investors in Germany, $100, $120 an ounce. Yeah. We're good with that. We'll change your name to reflect. In, in reality- like That's not strategy, name change, No, is wait it? a minute, that's part one, part yeah. one. Well, we really did show the world I can pour a silver bar. That's the first silver bar poured in the cap in 30 years. And it was great. Yeah. Now you gotta do it at scale. Yeah, we'll do it on scale. The, okay. the thing is, the acquisition of this asset, polymet, is part of the equation. Without that, I can't pour, I can't pour silver. So okay. it's, a, it's a production facility. We're going to do the tailings. We already bought the... So what are you sitting on? I mean, what's the size of the tailings you're sitting on at the moment? Accessible. The cap itself has 220 million tons of tailings. Yeah, but what are you sitting on? What, what can you get at? I'd rather don't not know. say no. We don't no, know. No, no, I yes. won't say it, but no. I, I okay. got in trouble for saying that What I rock, eh? They okay. found okay. out. Okay. Okay. They went to you the know? video. Yeah. Right. They went to the video because I did not news release it, and I had to take it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So have you got what you think is a commercial volume of yeah. tailings yeah. Yeah. that yeah. you can economically yeah. process? Yeah. We have right. about four to five years worth of production. Okay. It's at significant. At a meaningful level. Yeah. Should... The, our grades are, I can say it's four to 10 grand ounces a ton because we've said that. Okay. It's lucrative. Okay. So something to focus on and you and you can process for other mines yeah. as well. Yeah. So the yeah. idea is to build yeah. that yeah. component up. And that would be a t the tailings I'm talking about specific for other mines. Are, yeah. are there meaningful We will do everything for everybody. It, actually, we bought the equipment, came in from South Africa, it's mobile. In other words, in three months time, we're established, set up, and we'll process your product, oh, okay. your tailings. They produce product, the product will go to China. Right. We already met with the Chinese two years ago. But there's no deals in place. Are there, I'm sorry? Are there deals in place with the Chinese? Or you just think that's a no, market? Because that's kind of a yeah, generic no, phrase, right? No, well, the we've Chinese. been shipping to the Chinese for a while. Right, okay. Uh, we have done From where? products in the cobalt camp. Right. And the way it works with the Chinese, uh, we put it in containers, goes by ship, 45 days later, so we get paid in silver. Right. They won't pay us for the cobalt, they won't pay us for the nickel. Right. Just the silver. Okay. And we're good with that. Sure. It's a source of So when you revenue. say we, you, you mean Canada Cobalt yeah. Works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so there's yeah. revenue coming in from that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are the other things you're going to be doing? See, one of the main things, the real way to make money on this, this, this asset is actually the underground. And the underground, mm. now what we're doing, we're doing what we there call we high-intensity drilling. We're trying to find a word, uh, the high-grade silver is with the cobalt. We bought some mining equipment just recently. We had to bring it in from France because the French make small small yeah. mining equipment. Yeah, I saw. And uh, we've already dumped the stopes in the last year. So we found there's a lot of cobalt and silver in the stopes. So a lot of pieces have already been uh, right. laid out. So the safe so th th this is the bit that I think a mining company should be talking about. You, you've had to adapt and flex and yep. do other yep. things to yep. be, stay relevant, right? Yep. Which, which I admire. Yep. Um, but it's, it's not the big answer to all of this. So uh, tell me a bit more about the mine because you know the, the mine's the, where you're going to get real scale, yeah. isn't it? The value to this asset is actually the ability to pour silver. Okay. That's interesting. The value. Interesting. Yeah. So not necessarily your silver. Any everybody. Silver. Silver. Well, that's what we did when we were in a cobalt camp. When I worked for Agnico, I poured silver for everybody. Right. Brilliant. So that gives One an idea of what kind of company you are and where you what you think about. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. We, we had the only facility and we did it for everybody. And we're reasonable, you know, we, we did everybody's product. And if they didn't have the funds, and it's something like global energy, we sent our trucks to pick up your rock. Right. Just the terms change. Yeah. Right. No, it's, just, it's always that they look, you, you got to work together with your people. But if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're kind of the, the processing this and yeah. you're the only game in town, yeah. you kind of control who gets serviced, the timing, the quantities and the charging, don't you? Well, I'll tell you how we did it 30 years ago. Okay. Okay. We would put our rock to the side yeah. from Agnico. We put it to the side and I'll process your rock first. Why? Because we made more money processing other people's rock than we did mining our rock. Because you're ASIC. So in other words, we were able to mine silver below because you were your rock was processed. So right. when you put the overall equation, a lot of the investors says, how can you guys make money at $6 an ounce silver? Yeah. The reason we made money. Because you had margin elsewhere. Yeah, that's okay. how we made money. Smart. Okay, see that's interesting to me. Yeah. That's, that's interesting, that's a nice strategy that's, yeah. that I've learned something today. Yeah. So um, 
you've got to have those conversations with people. Presumably, it's the only game in town. You, you understand what their what their pricing is, what their what their um, limit is, and you, yeah. you can push right up to the butt right up to that, where it's yeah. just economic yeah. for them to do it. With no, you. no, we we're, we're not here to hurt them. The thing is, we want them to survive them. because mining. Yeah. I rather they mine their rock, their stock goes up because you see, we invested in global energy. Mm. It's a small company. It doesn't matter, but you know, if their stock does a, you know, we can do a ten banger with global energy. I'm happy. You know, I put a hundred thousand in, I make a million dollars, I get a warrant. But is that you? Or the, the company's also invested. Oh, the in, company right? did, okay. but so again, I'm, there's multiple strategies yeah, yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. Here. No, because I believe in the people and I believe in the product. I went out physically out there. You know, we spent four days out there. We had a wonderful time. They have a fantastic asset. Right. You know, okay. and I'll put money into it. Okay. And you know what? Just because their stock went down, that's irrelevant for me. You have to think long term. But the asset they have is wonderful. It's the location. Eh? No, yeah, I, get, I get all that. You know, yeah. That is great. Um, it's about making money. I yeah, get, I get that too. That's why yeah. we're here. But yeah. so, you know, sh your shareholders likewise. They'll they'll yeah. like to hear that story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the question of timing is, you know, when when they re recover is we don't unknown at the moment, but yeah. it'll it'll happen. Yeah. I'm interested in all the other things that you were doing to control. So the 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 polymath deal is actually quite meaningful for you yep. guys. It's a critical it's link. A, it's critical, but it also seems to be a priority for you over and above yeah. your own mining, right? So you just well, said? no, our mining's going ahead. Of there. Like, it's going ahead. Yeah, it's, it's going ahead. Like you know, like I said, we bought mining equipment. And, you know, we know it's hard to get this mining equipment. Came in from France. Yeah, this was long-term planning. Right. Because I tell you, you can't buy a scoop cram. It's like going buy a, a Volvo, eh? Yeah. At a car dealership, and yeah. Yeah, it takes a while to get some of this equipment. So, yeah. but what does that what does that tell us? Um, what do you know about Castle Mine at the moment in terms of your ability? To get I, I, I think know you've got some permits in place, yeah. and that's great. But I think it'll be a producer. It'll be a producer, but it'll be significant. What, significant, yeah. right? See, they had a lot of Agnico when they shut down. Had a lot of assets. That was the only asset we really zoned in on mm -hmm. because we knew the grades. Right. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For twenty five thousand, I mean, what are you going to buy for twenty five thousand? You can't even buy a car now. Volvo, apparently. <laughs> you can buy <laughs> Volvo for twenty five. Yeah, yeah, there's one. <laughs> Tiny no, one. No, but really, you think about it. The scoop cram we bought was yeah. used. One hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. Right. Brand okay. new, they're a quarter million, the two hundred forty thousand. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So look, why don't we, why don't we sort of sum up and if you could just share with people, say, right, here's my vision for my company, Canada yeah. Cobalt Works, and why should anyone new to this story think about it, getting on board and investing in you? Well, we are actually when you look at our our, our group, we're kind of unique in many ways. We are all people from the industry that have been at this for 20, 30 years or something like that. We're also very adaptive. You look at my board, and you'll see we're probably the only Canadian company that has a First Nation individual on the board who's a lady. Mm -hmm. So we understand there's a need to address the First Nations issues in Canada. We went ahead and did it. Mm -hmm. We didn't just wait and get a lawyer. And we hired a First Nations individual, a lady. Uh, you know, we adapt to the situation. We do also what we call voluntary rehab. There's a lot of environmental liabilities. You know, like 90 years ago, people just threw everything up. We willingly fix the problems. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is tailings. You know, we clean it up, and as we're cleaning up, we make money, and it's it's a win-win for everybody. So uh, we adapt. We look at what the market wants. Uh, we're really what we call pro-development. We believe in producing product. We show the world we can produce it. We mm -hmm. use a third party. We use SGS. You know, uh, you know, SGS is kind of a global group, and if SGS produces cobalt sulfate on spec, then they produce it on spec, and people say it's SGS. And of course, you pour a silver bar. Everybody can see a silver bar. It's a physical thing. Mm -hmm. And then you, you look at our drill results. You know, everything we do, even our exploration team, is third party. It's not us. Eh? So in other words. You can go to these people, they're a group of consultants, they've been with us for 10 years, and they drill, they produce the results. Like, we don't make things up. Eh? Okay. It's all third party. Okay, so you're saying we're adaptive, we yeah. try and keep our costs down, we. We do. Like, we don't have head office, we we're do. virtual. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to think whether those things necessarily are unique. Um, I'm not sure they're unique. Well, everything we raise goes on the ground. Eh? Nobody has a car. Nobody. I don't even have a car. I, I don't even have a desk. Right. Okay. Like this jacket, I had to borrow it. 
I saw. <laughs> I saw. He's not kidding, folks. <laughs> um, so, okay. But, but again, when are shareholders going to make money? That's the answer I'm trying to get to. So, you know, what, do you, what can you do to affect that? And clip, like I said, I, I, you I, can't I, control yeah. market, yeah. but some of the things that you're doing, I can see why they're stopping the, 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 the decline because mm. you are the adaptive bit I get. But when do you think shareholders are going to see money? It's hard to call, like, in the next private place when I actually get this, I, I actually the president of the company, and they cut me on my financing at 30 cents, say. So I'm coming in at mm. 35 cents. Yeah. I buy my paper, right? And, and when you think about it, if the president buys his own paper above market, yeah, he has to have some confidence. That's how I make money, eh? I don't make money because, I mean, uh, I, I get well, do, they not, do you take a salary? I'm, I'm, I'm not even an employee. Do you take a salary? I get paid, get this, 5000 a month for my technical services. Right. That's your total compensation package over and above what you pay or buy in the market. Actually, I put in more money in my private placements than I'm paid on an annual basis. Okay. That's what shareholders want to hear. That's, That's great. That's how I make my money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, That's I believe in the product. I believe in the people. Like, you know, you take a look at our, our directors. I'm actually the youngest one with the, with the least experience at... Uh, I guess I've been at this since 1982. Eh? Right. I'm the youngest one, aside from our First Nations individual. But from an operational po point of view, you know, at 35 years of experience, I'm still young. Okay. So we've been around. No, know. no, I, I, like, I, I, I get that. But it's, it, like, the question is, how do we work out, as shareholders, how do we work out whether we hold, yeah. sell, or buy, mm -hmm. or if you're new, yeah. Why come in now? What, what, what do you, what's the thing? What's the magic you've got? I think the magic would be the fact that be, uh, we'll focus on silver. We're going to get some exceptional drill results. We've already shown the world we've done it. Uh, Everywhere is focused on cobalt. We also put the silver numbers out. If you take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, normal grades, 100 ounces a ton, yeah. up to 300 ounces yeah. a ton. Mineable, we bought the mining equipment. So it's a combination exploration, pro development. Mm a cobalt credit, and if the market, you know, when you look at it, we kind of covered a lot of things that nobody else has done. Yeah, I, I, I guess what I'd like to see from, from you guys going forward is some sort of guidance as to the scale. I know you couldn't name a number, but no, no, if you say significant, I'm, I'll, I'll wait to see what that, yeah. what that looks we'll like, be but I'll, I buy the rest. Yeah, the news recently, uh, we, we got in trouble with this in the past with IROC, which is actually the yeah, regulatory yeah. authorities in yeah. Canada, and they actually found our news releases, and they found our presentation no matter what even in Hong Kong yeah and uh, we have to come yeah. back uh, to the people uh, okay tell, well when you're in a position to actually confirm yeah. that that would be nice when yeah. do you think you're going to be in a position to give that kind of guidance to the market it will be for your end I think really yeah. and we have to close this transaction in Parliament and I have a certain degree of confidence what I can say okay brilliant mm. thank you very much that was, a pleasure. was great to hear thank mm. you Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.